Hi everybody, welcome to the latest episode from the Rock to the Cloud. Um, as always, I am your um, your baffled uh, technical host, uh, Tom Hall. Um, I work uh, in the Microsoft team uh, here in the UK, and um, you know we try and find out things about server and hopefully pass that knowledge on to you, all the lovely people out there. So uh, today, um, as we always do, we try and find an expert. We've we've found an expert. Um, we've gone all the way up to, to Scotland again um, to find another expert. Um, and um, you know, this episode um, we're going to be talking to uh, so Lisa Clark. So Lisa, say hello to everybody. Hi everybody! <laughs> Thanks for having me. Ah, oh, lovely. Um, and Lisa, um, just uh, for everybody, a quick reminder because uh, we had you on season one, but now we're back on season two. Um, who you are and what do you do? Yeah, back back again, but this time with a new hair colour. So definitely need a, a reintroduction. Yeah, <laughs> My name is Lisa we're... Clark. <laughs> My <laughs> name is Lisa Clark, and I am a Microsoft MVP, and I work at Dell Technologies within the Azure Stack um, team. Our team is responsible for driving um, Azure Stack business across Dell and helping our customers and our partners achieve their hybrid cloud dreams with Azure Stack HCI. Um, so yeah, it's a fun fun job. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's no small feat, like, uh, you know, helping people achieve, uh, achieve their dreams, um, we, which is, well, I mean, no, that's, that's, that's a big statement right there. So, you know, thank you for doing that. Um, and, you know, today uh, we're talking about, well, the difference between Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server 2022 and maybe what, you know, what people maybe understand one way or the other, or, you know, what the confusion or the differences is, and you're going to, uh, let us know a few things and, and you know, um, there's a lot of good stuff happening around that. So let's talk about that a little bit more today. Yes. Cool. Yeah, hopefully we can. I'll share my thoughts around it um, and how I see them um, and, and the differences between them and, and why you might want to use one over the other or, or you know, just try and help clarify things a little bit. And um, because Microsoft have a lot of options when it comes to hybrid and um, they're definitely leading the way doing hybrid properly um, and options are great, but they can also sometimes be confusing. So I thought we'd just spend some time today and just work through, you know, what are the differences? And, you know, that's, that's brilliant because I'm confused. So <laughs> first of all, you can help me and then you can help help, help the audience. And like you're, you're exactly right because there's been, you know, Server 2022 launched, big claims it's the most hybrid, um, you know, OS ever. Um, we've kind of, but then kind of when I've been talking to people, we've been talking to, you know, for example, like Sarah, she's been telling me, um, Sarah Lee, and she's been telling me like, you know, some of the new features and talk to all sorts of people. And then they're like, uh, but this one you can only use on the Azure Stack, HC, you know, Azure Stack piece. And, you yeah. know, there's kind of little bits here and there, and it does get a little confusing. And, yeah. you know, I suppose hopefully what I'm sort of hoping for is, you know, some simplicity from today. So, yeah, if, um, it, you know, that would be great. So, uh, you know, let's ask the first question, which would be, um, when should a customer use Azure Stack HCI um, or when should they use Windows Server 2022? I suppose if we break it down to scenarios. Okay. Um, yeah, right. Okay. So let's talk about Azure Stack HCI first. Microsoft describes Azure Stack HCI as it's premier hyper-converged infrastructure platform for running virtual machines. So it's a stripped down version of Windows Server and it's focused specifically on being an operating system for hyper-converged infrastructure. So it means that the OS takes up less res resource as a smaller attack vector. But I think it's really important to start thinking about Azure Stack HCI as a cloud service rather a cloud service that includes an operating system rather than just an operating system. Um, it's also important to remember that Azure Stack HCI does not provide any guest licensing benefits. So, you know, any virtual machines that you run on top of that would need to be licensed accordingly. So when, when should a customer use it? Customers who want the best virtualization host to modernize their infrastructure, either for their existing workloads or for emerging requirements for edge locations. Um, customers who really want that easy extensibility into the cloud and a consistent set of tools to manage their, you know, on-prem workloads and their in the cloud workloads. Customers who want and are okay with a far more regular update cadence and features. Um, mm -hmm. I think especially basically if the customer is planning to or is already running workloads in Azure, and wants a consistent and seamless management experience and they want to bring those Azure governance and management constructs like policies, tags, 
resource groups. They want to bring those to their on-premise workloads um, and, and modernise the way you're consuming your operating system as well, because the operating system is consumed from Azure like any other Azure service. So, you know, it's 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 kind of modernising from an infrastructure level and but really changing how you consume that licence as well. So it's, it's quite different in that way. I would say that Azure Stack HCI is Microsoft's answer. We said we had a lot of options, right? But it's like their answer to true hybrid cloud. It, as an Azure service, it will have deeper integration with Azure. Um, and therefore, it's, it's like if you're all in with Azure and you need to run workloads on prem, this is the one for you. Okay. So that's Azure Stack HCI. Yeah. Windows Server 2022, right, is the new version in, a, in Windows Server that we all know and love. Right, it's the new version in the two to three year life cycle. And it's a, uh, if we say that Azure Stack HCI is a cloud service that, it, an, uh, that has an operating system, Windows Server is a highly versatile, multi purpose operating system with, you know, tons of different roles, yeah. um, which includes those guest rights, right? So if you want to use one of the roles built in, like Active Directory or File Service, then Windows Service Server is for you. You can also run it anywhere. So you can run it on bare metal as a hypervisor. You could run it on a virtual machine running in Azure or in AWS, if you mm. want to go that way. Um, so you can use it as the, the guest OS inside your virtual machines, but then you can use it as a traditional server, you know, for a domain controller or a SQL server installation. Um, and you might want to keep your traditional way of licensing and your, you know, the support model that you're that, that you know and love as well. Um, also, Windows Server would be used in environments where you need to be entirely disconnected because remember Azure Stack HCI requires you to be connected to Azure once every 30 days for billing purposes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Windows Server has been focused on applications, right? And it is and will continue to be a fantastic application runtime. Um, whereas Azure Stack HCI is purely focused on at the infrastructure level, which then you run your applications on top, either in mm -hmm. Windows, Windows or Linux VMs or on Azure Kubernetes service, which you can also run on Windows Server. So <laughs> there's also that similarity as well. <laughs> yeah, I, su I suppose it comes down to those almost like cost scenarios and you know how you want to do your billing, um, how much resource you want to use, uh, you know, if you're comfortable um, you know, I suppose paying for the guest licenses and then you want to do it that way in, in Azure Stack or if you want to make use of those, you know, if you buy a data center license in a traditional way and you want to then make use of those unlimited VMs, there's lots of little things in there that actually for some people, one thing might be better or the other. So there's no, I just want to clarify, there's no right or wrong. It's actually more to do with you understanding the scenario of what you've got and then also understanding yeah. that the the kind of, I suppose the end state of where you want to get to you know what does five years look like for me as a business owner uh, or me as a, as a solutions architect that I'm providing that service where do I want to go and take that person um, yep. and that business and that that you know that estate and solution what's the right thing to get me there and actually what can what can people afford um, yeah. because you know like it's often when I talk to someone like yourself it's like yeah you know this is brilliant and actually then you would to cost it and you'd be like holy moly, there's like yeah. absolutely no way that we could afford to do like that's perfect in, 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 a, in a world where there's you know unlimited resources. But actually, for say, like a small business partner, actually, that Windows server bit is probably better today. And then actually, once you start scaling, then you're going to want the Azure stack. And, and that's kind of like, I suppose what I've taken from it. So there's no right or wrong, everybody. Um, there's it's just no right or wrong. You've got to yeah. take a look at the features that are available in each one of them. Like I say, Windows Server is that multi-purpose, flexible, yeah. with lots of different things with it, operating system. Azure Stack yeah. HCI is focused on doing a few things really, really well. Um, and yeah, it really does depend on the feature sets that you're looking for and what you're looking to run. And actually, yeah. it's funny because you can either way, either way you cut it, you can have a really small instance of Azure Stack HCI actually be cheaper. So really, yeah. it just depends. Um, but yeah. cost is always cost is always important. We know that. Um, yeah. And this is a different way of doing things. Like say, the cost is for the the operating system, and it is purely just for the operating system. Brings it in line with some of our the other hypervisors out there in the market. But it is a different different move for Microsoft. So it'll be interesting to see how it develops in the future as well, because it's very early days. 
Yeah, no, and that's true. And the other thing that I gained uh, knowledge on is you need to talk to an expert like Lisa Clark, because she'll help you with this. Um, so Lisa, what are the differences between the management options for Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI? So what, you know, once you've gone down one of these two routes, you've got different management options. What are the, what are the options within those, those two spheres? So you've got all of the options that you know and love with Windows Admin Center still there. But they're not going anywhere. However, Microsoft is focusing really, he focusing really heavily on Windows Admin Center. Um, and so actually for both Windows Server 2022 and Azure Stack HCI, you can use Windows Server, uh, Windows Admin Center to manage both of them, which is pretty mm -hmm. awesome. You can also use, and again, this is why people are confused, um, but it's about options, right? You can use the Azure portal to manage both of them to different depths, right? So because Azure Stack HCI is natively integrated into Azure, so it has its own resource provider in Azure. So you log into Azure, see Azure Stack HCI, it's its own, own wee resource provider. And um, that means that you can use the Azure portal to manage your Azure Stack HCI. But because it is an Azure service that's Azure service that's natively integrated, you can manage that to the cluster level, which is a differentiation point, right? So with Azure Stack HCI, you get a deeper level of integration, you can manage it at the cluster level. However, with Windows uh, Server, you can also gain management capability from Azure using Azure Arc, right? So Azure Arc for servers, you can deploy the agent into your virtual machine, and then you can manage the virtual machines from Azure as well. So you can use Windows Admin Center, and you can use the Azure portal to slightly just now varying, let's say, depths of the infrastructure. Yeah. So for now, this is an area where there are many similarities between Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI from that management perspective. But as Azure Stack HCI evolves um, because of its nature as an Azure service, um, things that you can do with Azure Stack HCI and Azure portal will only get better, right? and provide much more sort of consistent management experience across on-prem and in the cloud. But like I say, there are options. So if Windows Server is for you and you need those roles that you're, you know and love in Windows Server, but you also want to have some hybrid capability, you know, Windows Server 2022 has delivered on that and there is um, integration there as well. Cool. So we're starting to get into, I suppose, the product offering perspective, um, because obviously you're saying that Windows Server is delivering on a few things. Let's talk about the key differences between Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI from, I suppose, that product offering perspective. Yeah, because I think actually, from if when you look at them as a product offering from Microsoft, you can start to see where the differentiations lie, and it, mm. it helps. It helps paint this picture, right? Um, and I think it's it's a picture that hopefully over time is going to get clearer and clearer. Um, but yeah, doing my best to paint it a little bit today. So at a very basic level, Azure Stack HCI is really a cloud service, whilst Windows Server is an operating system, as mm. you know, as we've always known. It's a traditional operating system. And this is made clear clearer by not only the difference in consumption models, but also the fact that so Windows Server has its own end user license agreement, right? Whereas Azure Stack HCI is covered under the Microsoft customer agreement or your online subscription agreement that you sign up to when you start to consume all Azure services. So even at these like basic levels, there's differences. Support wise as well, they, they differ, right? So Windows Server can be covered by different options. You might be used to having Microsoft Premier support. Um, whereas Azure Stack HCI, it's covered under the Azure support model. So there's differences there. Hmm. Even just the way you can you can download Azure Stack HCI from Azure, but you have to go to the Microsoft Volume Licensing Center for Windows Windows Server. Um, Azure Stack well, HCI is not, is not, not, for, not for much longer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they will, yes, they will both become um, accessible from Azure. Um, but just now, I think, just now, you can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, no, I think it's, yeah. I think it's, um, it has happened. Um, but the, oh. but yeah, I think the, the, the volume licensing has moved across. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. No longer a difference. Adding to the confusion. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so Azure Stack HCI is, you know, it's intended as a host OS, um, whereas you can run Windows Server in virtual machines on premises or running in, in Azure. 
So there's the difference there as well. You can run Windows Server anywhere. Azure Stack mm -hmm. HCI is intended as a host OS. Um, okay. From a lifecycle perspective, we know that Azure Stack HCI is going to get annual releases and Windows Server will remain on a two to three year. Um, and per, from a technical feature perspective, we know that things like stretch clustering, which is available on Azure Stack HCI, won't be coming to Windows Server. Um, and there was a few things released in the recent um, release of Azure Stack HCI, HCI as well, like kernel soft reboot, things like that. They'll be coming to Azure Stack HCI rather than Windows Server. Um, so I think the difference between the two just now um, is the, as small as it will ever be. The gap is only going to widen and hopefully the picture is only going to get clearer. Um, yeah. One of the other things that, I, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the extended security updates for workloads such as uh, Windows Server and SQL 2008, 2008 R2, and the 2012 workloads that are coming out of date, and um, you can get extended security updates um, by moving those to Azure Stack HCI. Um, yeah. That's yeah. So that's the difference <laughs> just now as well. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I don't need to correct you on that one. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so um, Azure Stack HCI, um, how's its how what's how's its license? How's it consumed? Because that's mm -hmm. something which uh, you know again people get a little bit confused about, and if they're used to buying, I suppose a traditional license in a traditional way. Um, it's a little bit different because you buy your hardware, it's got a new OS on it, but it's not got a cost, but then you turn it on and you go to Azure and then you start getting billed and everyone gets a bit confused. So yeah, yeah. Like, what, like what's going on there? Yeah. So Azure Stack, I know this is the funny part, right? Because is it, can we call it licensed anymore? Or yeah. because it's consumed, it's consumed as a service from Azure. So it's on a consumption basis. Um, from Azure and it's $10 per core per month or the local equivalent. Um, actually, so yeah. Dell, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention this, but we recently no, added it. Like, we're, 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 cool. we're cool with that. We're not like, but you work at Dell, like, you know, tell us yeah. about, tell us about Dell. Like, it's fine. <laughs> it's not infomercial. It's fine. It's, as long as it's not an infomercial, we will just like. Other kidding. OEMs, other OEMs are available, but Dell is the best. But anyway. But um, not a fine. Right now, carry on. <laughs> I'm going to get you into trouble. Um, so yeah, we talking about this. So it's ten dollars per core per month, right? And like you say, it is when you start using it. So when you light it up and you connect it to Azure, and it starts getting billed, like all your other consumption-based services. So we recently added a capability into our Open Manage integration with Windows Admin Center. It's a mouthful, um, which allows customers to right size the CPU cores for the workload performance, yeah. um, but also also allows customers to like optimize their TCO when it comes to that OPEX spend on the Azure Stack HCI OS. So for instance, a customer could invest in a hardware platform that has more cores than they're going to be using initially. Um, yeah. And therefore, within Windows Admin Center, we can right size that um, with that open manage integration so that customers can pay for only the cores that they are currently using with Azure Stack HCI OS. And then as they start to grow and consume and need more of that hardware, they can then also um, they can adjust oh, the CPU, awesome. CPU core count, um, which is which is it's quite cool, actually. Um, it, it's there for that purpose. So for you to. <laughs> To, you know, grow um, and update as you as you consume um, more cores as part of your your platform. But yeah, so yeah, it's and again, that's very different from the the traditional licensing model. And again, that's where all the cost conversations come into because it's quite different. People are not used to that. People are not used to having to um, pay for the operating system and then worry about licensing workloads on top. Yeah, especially if they're predominantly Windows Server, right? Yeah, and you know, you're exactly right. I suppose with Windows Server, you've bought it, you've got your, you know, standard 16 core license in there, happy days, and I can just buy two extra cores as I need them in those additional licenses, fine. Um, but this is slightly different. This is actually, it's per month, you know, you're punching up and down and kind of like, it's a bit different and it changes. But, yeah. um, you know, there's always that point of kind of crossover where this way, when you get to a certain size gets more cost effective so you kind of just you know if people just need to kind of weigh up what they want to do how they want to do it what resources yeah. they're going to use the cloud for because you know if you're not going to do you know your stretch clustering and those kind of or take advantage of those amazing things that you can do with the Azure side of things 
well, then actually, then you're probably answering the question, well, maybe Windows Server 2022 is right for me. You kind of yeah. like, you know, you, it, people need to figure that stuff out themselves. That's what it's the whole point of having these conversations. Um, it depends as well, like, it depends what you're running on top of them, right? Because if you are running a significant amount of Windows Server virtual machines, then yes, Windows Server, because of that um, unlimited guest OS option, that's going to be your pick. Um, if you're if that's what you're predominantly running then yes if you're running predominantly linux or you're starting to consume aks and you want to start consuming more azure services on prem on top of aks then yep. maybe it's azure yeah um and actually coming on to that you can use both right so well, that was going to be my next question my next question was like do you have to choose no yeah sure, sure no. You don't. tell me why i wouldn't have to choose you, you can use both because well, two different ways, right? So you could be running Azure Stack HCI and then you could be running Windows Server um, as the guest OS on your virtual machines. You yep. can you could apply a secondary OS to get the unlimited guest VM uh, licenses oh, too. Oh, there's a licensing hack for everybody right there. Just now. Things are Just fast now. changes. <laughs> but, um, but, but then also, right, customer might look to have both um, like a mix of Windows Server 2022 and Azure Stack HCI within their environment, not within the same cluster set, but within their environment. Maybe they want to focus their Azure Stack HCI clusters on edge scenarios that they have or remote branch office scenarios that they have or where they have to deploy multiple dispersed infrastructures. And they want to centrally manage them from Azure. Um, so you, you, you can use both. You absolutely can use both, um, and get the, the best of both worlds, um, depending on where you as a customer are as part of your journey, but also where your workloads are and what they need. Um, so you absolutely can use, use both. Like I said, they're at their most similar point right now. The gap's mm -hmm. only going to begin to widen in terms of, uh, capabilities and where and why you would use, um, each of them. Um, yeah, I think we're going to see feature updates obviously coming to Azure Stack HCI OS on an annual basis. But I think yeah. there's going to be developments around technologies around Azure Stack HCI, right? Like with Azure with Azure Arc. Um, I, I, there's going to me, be. I think, you know, Azure Arc is that it's that crossover piece that it makes it it makes both of them so accessible. Um, yeah. And you know, it's exciting. And also as well as a, a Microsoft employee. Um, and a shareholder, I'm more than happy for anybody to buy uh, both and use them all at the same time. That's fine. Um, so yeah, so uh, more great advice from Lisa. So um, uh, well, you yeah. know, do what Lisa says. That's buy buy everything and uh, use everything as much as possible. Um, perfect. Uh, well, look, um, we're moving to that fun part of the show, Lisa. Yeah. It's the, oh, it's, the yeah. it's the silly meme. It's the meme review. Um, mm -hmm. As as. As always, with every episode, if you if you the audience have got a meme, please send it in. If you've got comments on the meme, let us know. Um, uh, these these are always meme tastic. Um, so um, and I always look a bit silly because I generally speaking don't know what I'm talking about. And then obviously we've got an expert like Lisa who, uh, you know, she looks at it. Um, yeah, no pressure, and can usually see the funny side of it. So uh, right, let's um, let's jump into the meme. Oh, this is a busy one. Loads of writing. Uh, boss, the server is down. Well, just restart it. Mm, it's not that simple. No, because you've broken it. Yeah, because like down, lying down. <laughs> also, it is not that simple. No, they, it's, oh, not. They, it's not. Although, I mean, the first go to piece of advice from any person you ask about any technical thing is to turn it on and turn it off again. Yeah, turn it off and turn it on. That's true. Maybe if they were using the, um, is it the hot patching piece from Windows Server 2022, then uh, actually that wouldn't have happened and it would be an issue because um, that would have been, it would have been a safe reboot and nobody would have even known. That's uh, Windows Server 2022. Is it the Azure edition or is that an actual Windows oh, is, it, is, it is the Azure edition. Yes, it is. Oh, see, that, yeah, see, there we are. This is why we get an expert. So that I, so I don't confuse there is more layers to it now with Azure, uh, with um, Windows Server Azure Edition. Yeah. Like you say, lots of options. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's also quite a few hard drives there. I can see. Look at the. That's. Uh, it definitely, like a, a restart is not going to fix that particular issue. That's my technical opinion. <laughs> uh, well, there we are. The technical opinion that can't be fixed. Uh, right, meme number two. Here we go. 
Okay, evolution of memory storage. Oh, uh, no. it's quite thoughtful, this one. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, like one of those evolution t-shirts that people, um, you know, trendy people wear. Remember USBs. I used to I love, love USBs. But uh, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask the ladies that age. Um, but I I'm I'm there with floppy disks. Um, and I, like, not yeah. like actual so floppy, like the floppy. Not yeah. even those aren't even floppy disks, but the the, the, the old banana disks. Do you, like, do you remember banana disks? No. So I'm on the. So I started at that second stage, the square floppy disk, and then I spent yeah. most of my life, I would say, in the disk and USB space. Okay. But it's, it's true though. If you, think, if you think about a USB stick, like from, I don't know, like like ten years ago, you were lucky to have like eight megabytes or something stupid on it. Do you know what I mean? Like that yeah. was that was like massive. And now, you've a limited cloud. Just go to well, a drawer. Well, just use OneDrive. By the way, another shout out for another Microsoft product. I love OneDrive. I think I've got yeah. a, I think I've got a terabyte of storage. I use it to back up all my um, iPhone photos and stuff and it, my life in my OneDrive it probably should be tick, that. Tick, tick. Honestly, Lisa, we'll I'm have to give you a, uh, we'll have to pay you advertising costs now for just promoting Microsoft stuff. So, but that's it. See, like, so doing a great job for Dell, promoting Dell, done a great job for Microsoft, promoting Microsoft. Um, look, I, that's pretty much today's episode over. Um, I'm just going to summarize real quick. Um, and just, um, you, you know, I think for me, there's no right or wrong understand your scenario talk to an expert make sure they're giving you the right advice around Azure Stack HCI and Windows Server 2022 you can yeah. buy and use both given the right scenario for you your business your company um and uh third point obviously talk to Lisa Clark at which, which company did you work for again so I didn't quite catch that was it um Dell Technology saying, Dell Technologies and you're saying Dell Technologies make the best servers well look, I think all servers are great not just Dell servers me who says it we are number one in server we're number one in hci and number one in microsoft hci segmentation too so wow yeah. you wouldn't want to wouldn't want to have an argument with lisa would you right okay <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely fine um so like, all good um like, thank you thank you lisa uh we very much appreciate it as always um everybody we really appreciate you watching this episode uh from the rock to the cloud uh keep your eye out on channel nine linkedin youtube for the next episode and remember any thoughts or comments uh please let me know um and um yeah we'll get um we'll get lisa to answer those and tell you why dell's great next time on the next show thanks a lot cheers bye bye